Good morning. So we're having to do a double take. We had some technical difficulties and I saw that some people couldn't hear and I did this whole wonderful presentation that no one could hear or understand. <laughs> so I'm back. I'm going to do it again for you. And um, our topic for today is how to grow long, healthy hair. So I'm just going to cover the generals about the generals and the basic things you need to do or to avoid so that your hair can grow long. So, you know, many people complain that their hair only grows a certain length, especially people that have kinky and coily hair or hair that's on the drier side. It's, it's tough to get the hair to grow beyond the shoulders. It seems like it always stops here. A lot of customers say that. Or it just, they feel like the hair is not growing. But you can clearly see that there is new growth, so the hair is growing. So how, to, how can you figure it out? What do you need to do? Um, overall, it's just paying attention to your hair, giving your hair what your hair needs and knowing what your hair needs. So the, one of the biggest things is trimming your ends, right? Making sure that your ends are trimmed. Trim your ends, trim your ends on time. Do not wait a long time to trim your ends. We get people that come in, they haven't trimmed their ends in six months. Um, or they just don't know. They just don't know when, to, when they need to trim their ends, right? So how do you know when you need to trim your ends, okay? We also get people that come in that they say they just got a trim. And the stylist is saying, well, you need a trim. So then they're confused and they just give up, you know, on trimming their ends when they should be, right? So you need to know for yourself. So some of the things to look for, obviously, if you're combing your hair and the comb is getting stuck when you get down to the end, you probably need a trim. You feel, in your, you feel your hair, your hair feels great here, and then you get here, it's kind of brittle feeling. You probably need a trim. If you see little beads on the ends, the hair actually will buck up, buckle up when it's split really bad. It'll buckle up and beat up on the ends, and that is a sign that you, have, you need a trim, right? The other thing is when you get your hair styled and you notice everything stays nice, but the ends just start bushing out. Everything else is where it's supposed to be. Probably need a trim, right? So you wanna make sure you know when you need a trim so that you, if you go somewhere else and they tell you, oh, you, even though you just got a trim, you need a trim, you'll know whether you really need that trim or not. Um, but just making sure, pay attention to your hair, make sure your ends are trimmed and trim them on time. Don't wait, some people don't wanna trim their ends because they feel like, oh, I want my hair to grow long. If I trim my ends, it's never gonna grow. That's, that's crazy, actually. Um, it's just gonna continue to split, and it's never gonna get long. So make sure you trim those ends. Wash your hair on time. So traditionally in natural hair, a lot of people will go three weeks, four weeks. I can tell you from experience with my own hair that when I really started wearing natural hair, I was going about three weeks, right? Wearing some protective styles, some loose styles, um, like the one I have today. And I noticed that I would lose more hair during my detangle, washing every three weeks. So I tried washing two weeks, which is my standard, what I do now. Two weeks works great, I lose a lot less hair. If I could wash my hair every week, I would do it. But it's too much maintenance. Most people, most people with thick, long, natural hair, or just thick, thick hair in general, are not gonna wash their hair every week. But washing your hair more, you get to keep the scalp clean, the follicles clean, avoiding buildup, you're not oversaturating your hair. That's another thing, you know, a lot of people don't know that um, there is such thing as over moisturizing your hair, having so much product on that it actually breaks the hair when you start going in or when you're combing it or restyling it in between washes. That does happen. A good, a good um, technique to use is just take, take a piece of a strand of your hair out. Um, try this maybe your second week try to break it. If it snaps very easily, you probably have way more product in your hair than you should have in there, especially if you know you don't have weak hair, right? Probably time to wash your hair. Be very careful with detangling. So as you know, that's probably when you're going to lose the most hair. Now some customers are actually detangling their hair in between washes, which can be very dangerous if you have kinky or coily naturally dry hair because you're combing hair that's not in a combable state so you know that that is just a bad idea combing and brushing hair that's not in a combable state just just avoid doing that all together um, sometimes we get clients and we'll say uh, do you comb your hair or brush your hair in between styling and and they'll say yes and when we say don't comb or brush your hair they're just like oh my god 
I have to, I have to brush my hair. <laughs> I have to comb my hair. And that's understandable, fine, if that's what you have to do, but just know you're gonna break your hair. Maybe wash it, you know, do a little bit more frequent washing so that you can brush and comb your hair more. That would be so much better. Um, making sure that your hair is detangled before you blow dry. Some people will go from the bowl or at home to, you know, they detangled it in the shower and then they're just gonna come out and they're just gonna blow dry their hair. No, detangle it again before you put the little small bristle blow dryer comb on there. You definitely need to detangle. And of course, use a wide tooth comb. <laughs> Don't comb your hair with no little small, little rat tail comb when you got all of this hair, this massive hair on your head. Uh, primary styling, okay, so this is a big deal. So your primary style is how you normally wear your hair every day. If your hair is naturally dry and trying to grow long hair, then you should wear protective styles. That's cornrows, two-strand twists, you know, flat twists, anything where the hair is all put away. Um, extensions, where the hair is all put away. That should be your primary style if you have naturally dry uh, hair and you're trying to grow long hair. Uh, reason being is when your hair is out like mine, like if you, my hair is not naturally dry, it stays pretty soft, so I can wear my hair out more. But if your hair is naturally dry, meaning you have to really do the work to get it to be moisturized, if you wear your hair out like this a lot, like as your primary style, um, flexi rod sets anything out, you're going to notice that your hair dries out very quickly. So the key thing with protective style is to hold moisture in. If you're using Fabulox products and you get cornrows or some protective style, you're going to notice that even in three weeks when you take those braids down, your hair is still very well moisturized. So think about that. I know you want to wear it out and all that. I understand you can do that, but just not as your primary style. What are you washing your hair with? So you've, seen me do, you've seen me talk a lot about cleansing, conditioning creams, and co-washes. That's because if you have naturally dry hair, your shampoo is the worst enemy because it's going to strip all of your hair, you know, all of the moisture and good, good stuff out of your hair. You don't want to do that. Um, use a cleansing conditioning cream. Use a co-wash as your primary wash and then go in when you have product buildup with a regular shampoo. But your primary cleansing agent probably should not be, you know, a clarifying shampoo or something that's going to strip everything out of your hair. Blowouts, so blowouts, don't do it. <laughs> Kinky and coily, dry, naturally dry hair, just, just avoid it altogether because one bad blowout is, just can end your, your journey of healthy hair. There's no way to recover. <laughs> it doesn't just, we get calls, uh, I've gotten calls of people crying on the phone that have gotten blowouts with naturally dry hair. Um, they've lost their curl pattern or their hair is shedding severely from one time there is nothing we can do. So it's just best to avoid it if you have naturally dry hair. The kind of hair that does fine with blowouts is Dominican hair, hair that is just straight wash and go. You put water on it, it just magically curls up. That's great, it's just fine. But we're talking about kinky and coily hair. Don't do it. Never get tight extensions or braids, right? Never, just don't do it. Um, I've seen cases where people have gotten tight braids and the hair hasn't grown back. You know, hopefully you do everything you can to get it to grow back, but why take the risk? Just never do it. And if you think it's tight, it's probably tight. If you think it's tight, it's probably tight. Um, some people want the style to last longer. They want to be able to wear it for months, you know, two months. That's way too long to be wearing any style. Um, so they figure, oh, well, if you get everything, then I can wear it. You really don't want to, you don't want to do that because you're going to have to pay the price of doing that. So just... Get your extensions, maybe for one month, maybe a month and a half, fine. Um, but just, they can't be tight. If you're wearing weaves, this is all about growing long, healthy hair. If you're wearing weaves, you have to know that when you take the thread and you're going underneath of that cornrow and you're securing the track on there, that the thread can cut into your hair. So we've seen it, all this long people, they call themselves doing a protective style with a weave. They come in, they take their weave out, we take those cornrows out, and you got your long hair mixed in with this short one inch hair now because the thread has cut into your hair. I just, you know, I just don't like it. <laughs> I'm a healthy hair person, I just don't like it. It just drives me crazy. 
and there's nothing you can do. Then, then the stylist is stuck with, okay, well, we, we need to grow the broken hair and retain the long hair. It just, it's a nightmare. Um, but there are healthy people that can do weaves in a healthy way. You just need to find that person. Don't go to $10 weave, weave in and out, $20 weave in and this, don't, don't do it. Um, suffocating your hairline with hair gels. You already know what I'm gonna say. If you put something on your edges and it's laying down, it's just laying there, it stays there all day and night, and nothing moves, then you know that you suff you're suffocating your edges. So a lot of the young women do it <laughs> just now. You know, they got some years to go. The baldness is, is coming. Just, you know, it's just a matter, <laughs> matter of time. Um, if you're going to do that, just use some sort of natural, there are natural gels that will lay your hair down. African formula, I always advocate them because they're great. Fabulous will have one soon. Uh, just be aware of that. Uh, tight headbands, head scarves, uh, anything that you're pulling tight around your edges or covering your hair all the time tightly like that, then the oxygen's not getting to your scalp. So your scalp likes to breathe, right? You're trying to grow long, healthy hair. You gotta have some, I even say sunlight. Now I don't have any evidence <laughs> that sunlight helps your hair to grow, but it feels good on your scalp. <laughs> so maybe that's it. Uh, let's see, styling products that harden, right? Anything that dries and hardens your hair is going to dry your hair out. If you have naturally dry hair, right? And this is this happens a lot. You got naturally dry hair. You want to do a wash and go. Nothing else is working, so you're gonna pull out some gel that's gonna make your hair hard and crispy because it's the only thing that will work to show your your coils. Well, you're not gonna have long, healthy, growing, long hair. It's just not gonna not drying your hair out like that, especially if that's your primary style. So you won't be able to do that. Uh, let's see what a hair color. So hair color. One big one is if you're going darker, right, and you, you're getting black or dark browns, why use permanent dye for that? Permanent dye is gonna be aggressive. When you can just use a semi-permanent or demi-permanent, get good results, you're still coloring it every month, especially if you're a person that hates to see gray roots. Try to use things that are more gentle if you're coloring your hair. If you have hair that's on the drier side, doing blondes, uh, anything where you're lifting high above browns, just know that yes, it's gonna dry your hair out some and it's gonna be a little bit more difficult for you to grow really long hair if your hair is on the drier side. So when I say kinky and coily hair on the drier side, there's also kinky and coily hair that's on the softer side. So if your hair is naturally soft, you can get away with doing lighter colors. You can get away with some things that you can't if your hair is naturally dry. On the internal side of things, of course, keeping your stress level down and trying to make sure that you know, you're avoiding being stressed out all of the time. Uh, that's important because if you're stressed out all the time, <laughs> you're losing your hair. None of this stuff is gonna matter. Multivitamins and eating healthy. Obviously, you know, you are what you eat. You're eating healthy and getting all your vitamins and your nutrients. Yes, it's gonna show in your hair. So that's something that you wanna do. Take a multivitamin if you feel like if you haven't tried it, you know, if you're just a super healthy raw food eater, what have you, that's great, but that's not the majority. Just start taking a multivitamin. They, they do work pretty well. So, and of course there are other things, other things you can do, like you might hear people talk about biotin, um, which is very useful in a lot of cases. Um, there are all kinds of other things that you can do, but these are the primary things that you can do to have healthy, long growing hair. So, and of course, I'm going to tell you that you need to buy Fabulog products because <laughs> Fabulog products, all this stuff has been thought about already in a jar. So, you know, just try to, just look at it like that. You know, if you, if you start using our products too, maybe that will help you with your moisture content levels, help you feed your follicles. Do that in combination with everything we discussed today. And maybe you can start having long, healthy, growing hair. So I've got to go. Thank you so much for joining uh, me today at Fabulox, the Public Blender. We're here on Saturdays from 12 to 5, so we're going to open now. So hopefully we'll see you next week, next Saturday, 11 o'clock.